What's up, everybody? It's the Digital World Podcast. So we're going to go over a few charts because a lot of these charts are pretty uh, uh, alarming. And, you know, I, I think you need to be well aware of the data to see what's going on. Because if you're not aware, <clears throat> that's when, you know, you hit dangerous, dangerous, uh, you make dangerous decisions um, that may not be backed by the data. And so a lot of people, I know a few people who have decided to buy homes at this point in time when interest rates have just, I mean, they're really, really high right now uh, to get, to be able to afford a mortgage. And so um, there's other people buying cars, you know, and they're paying like nine, 10% <laughs> for their car loans. And it's just ridiculous. I knew someone who said, oh, yeah, I got a 7% uh, uh, interest rate on my car loan. Yeah, that's pretty cheap. I was like, what are you talking about, man? That's that, it's, that's very expensive, especially when you could get a 0% interest rate for 72 months. And so um, people just don't know what they're doing. They're, they're not finan- financially inept or they're financially inept. And... Um, you know, right now they're like, oh, yeah, we can do it. It's fine. We can afford it. And then, you know, fast forward a year or two, things get a little bit rocky. And all of a sudden, um, you find yourself in a precarious situation. So, anyways, enough of me rambling. <clears throat> Let me uh, get started on this. So, U.S. is now importing more from Mexico than China. This development has occurred for the first time since 2003. Now, there's a lot of rumblings, a lot of talk about, well, China's, uh, you know, golden era is has come to an end as far as, or as it pertains to manufacturing. Um, you know, that whole narrative that you hear that China's strong, it's only getting stronger, it's going to overtake the U.S. Well, I mean, you know, what does the data say? Obviously, they have a lot more partners now internationally. Um, but as their demographics start changing and their population starts getting older, um, what's going to happen there? So I think those are the questions you need to ask because now we're importing more from Mexico than we are from China. So very interesting. All right. Chrysler offers voluntary separation packages for half of U.S. white collar employees to reduce headcount. The packages will be offered to you know, 6,400 of 2,700 U.S. employees with five or more years of employment, the company said. And I don't think people are aware that right now unemployment is on the rise. And usually the last thing to go before a recession is unemployment. And so as you're looking at those charts, you're starting to see job postings are have uh, decreased sharply. And you're starting to see that unemployment is starting to tick up. And it's just a matter of time before you see it really take a sharp turn. And this is, I mean, you're seeing it everywhere as far as like uh, HR roles, uh, a lot of these um, uh, manufacturing roles. You're starting to see things really shake up. And here, Finance Law said job security is 10 times more important than getting a 10% raise right now. These people who are striking have no clue what's coming. And he's referring to the UAW strikers. So, yeah. There's, there's a lot of pain coming. Uh, just the interest on the national debt consumed 40% of all individual income tax revenue in October. U.S. Treasury is spending almost twice as much on interest as it did a year ago. It's unsustainable, but Washington won't stop spending. Do you think it ends with default or inflation? Now, obviously, they're going to inflate away before they even default because they can print. So... Um, not a good sign. Not a good sign. Uh, listen to this. So a lot of people right now, like you're, you're going to start sitting in dealerships because no one's buying cars. The people who are are, are dumb. They don't know what they're doing. Um, but this is the, the state of uh, the, the, the car dealerships. I follow this guy um, here on Twitter called Car Dealerships Guy. And he posts a lot of information, and it's not looking good. Listen to what this guy has to say. Story time. So I talked to one of our reps yesterday, 
who was out visiting a couple dealers and he had mentioned that there is a store that is just outside of Kansas City that currently has probably 25 to 30 new vehicles in inventory and has probably 45 to 50 used vehicles in inventory. And he sat down and was talking to one of their salespeople yesterday because they're very, 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 very light as far as staffing goes and they have sold one car. If you're watching this, it's November 10th and I talked to him yesterday, that would have been November 9th. And to think that a dealer, a franchise dealer for that has sold one car, not one new car, not one used car, one car and has let's just say somewhere between 70 and 80 vehicles stocked in inventory. And this isn't this isn't a like a Fiat brand or it's a it's a big name brand. I'm not going to say the name just to try to keep everything private. But I can tell you this, if I had one car sold on the 10th of the month, I would be in panic mode. All right. And so I, that's the state of, of car dealerships. Uh, here we see tax revenue declines, flashing recession. Uh, it says, don't worry, recessions are transitory. So every time you start seeing these large flashes of declining tax revenue, it's usually an indication of a coming recession. And so and you see that very evidently in the 80s, 2001, and the GFC, and obviously the COVID recession. So <clears throat> we're due. The data is pointing towards something. Um, when it happens, we don't know, but it's 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 here in the very soon future. Um, here is a chart for uh, what the population is like, um, and also uh, what the what, what percentage of the population um, is age sixty five and above. So you can see the population in blue; it's declining, right? And you've seen a, a decline really in the 90s, starting in the 90s. And you have population ages 65 and above for the U.S. is skyrocketing. So that means we're slowly moving to uh, an older population. And you're going to see a, a shift. And, and who's going to support that older population? Because, you know, a lot of your taxes go towards supporting um those uh, re uh not retirement funds but uh essentially um to support those those uh, older individuals that, that that retire so this is not a good demographic chart and it's setting up for for uh societal calamity um of epic proportions so folks you got to strap in you know tough times are ahead and the data is showing, it's indicating that, that something terrible economically is coming. Um, you know, it could be 2024. Remains to be seen. But once the Fed starts cutting rates, uh, it's right around the horizon. So thank you for watching. Like and subscribe to the channel. This is the Digital World Podcast. And I'll see you in the next episode.